Hey, so welcome back. Uh, welcome to part two of disk management. Uh, in part two, we're going to talk about um, you know, creating, deleting, uh, managing uh, partitions for uh, MBR and GPT disks. Uh, this will be a relatively quick one. Uh, part three, we'll talk about uh, making, creating file systems, persistently mounting file systems. Uh, and then in part four, we'll talk about uh, LVM. So let's just go ahead and get started. This shouldn't take too long. All right, so what we're going to focus on here, you know, looking at the, uh, the exam objectives for a second. And what we're looking at here is we're looking at this piece, um, list, create, delete partitions and MBR on MBR and GPT disks. And then again, also remember that, you know, specifically on the exam objectives, they talk about uh, adding new partitions, logical volumes, uh, and swap to a system and then as we outlined before you know non-destructively and so in the previous lesson we talked about you know some of the constraints that we work under when we're dealing with um, you know MBR uh, disks versus GPT disks and so again we need to know how to uh, do these activities without necessarily um, deleting existing partitions and things that are already uh, there so let's just go ahead and take a quick look now there are a number of different tools that we have uh, that we can use for uh, for managing partitions, okay? So the, I'm gonna just focus on two different tools. We're gonna look at the FDisk utility for MBR disks, and we'll look at the GDisk utility for GPT disks. But the um, we also have uh, Parted, uh, we have SF disk, uh, SG disk. So there, I mean, there are a number of different partition management uh, utilities that are out there. CF disk is another one. I'm just going to pick two, the two that I use, the two that I prefer, but certainly, you know, if you want to research uh, different utilities, you certainly can. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and get a interactive sudo session going. All right. Okay, so I'm root. So the F disk utility, uh, which has been around forever, um, allows us to create, manage partitions on a uh, MBR disk. Now, one of the nice things about FDisk is we can do an FDisk minus L. FDisk minus L will list what I currently have. So you'll see here that uh, I currently have disk dev VDA, which is 21.5 gigs and doesn't have any partitions on it. And then I also have uh, dev SDA here, okay, which is 16 gig and it already has uh, a number of partitions. Okay, It's got the boot partition here and then the logical volume manager partition, which includes some logical volumes for uh, for root and for our swap. And that was what was there as part of the uh, initial installation. So I'm going to work with the this that is currently uh, empty here, uh, VDA. So if I type in uh, fdisk and then forward slash dev VDA, get into the fdisk utility. It's fairly simple to use. Uh, press M for... Uh, for help, okay, and you'll see here that this allows me to um, set uh, or create partitions. So, for example, I can use an N here to create uh, partitions. Uh, you'll see the default here is to create a, uh, a primary partition. So, I'll go ahead and select the default partition number. The default will be the first partition because there aren't any partitions currently on this disk. All right, first sector is the first available sector, and then here for the last sector, I can specify you know for example um size you know so plus you know one gig okay and now if i print okay you'll see that i now have one one gig partition and by default the type on that partition is linux now if for some reason we want to change the type to um you know lvm or uh, swap or something like that i could press t here okay and if I want to get a list of all the codes, okay, and so the most common codes probably that you would use would be the ones listed here. We have, you know, Linux, which is a default. You wouldn't necessarily have to change to that. And then we also have um, Linux swap, you know, 82 there. And then we also have 8E, which is Linux uh, LVM. Okay, I'm not going to change it, okay, but I could change it here. So if I just leave it at Linux, I could just type in 
it looks still in it. So if I want to create another partition, uh, again, the default here is a primary partition, but notice because I am creating an MBR disk that it is showing me, you know, hey, you got three free. You know, remember that's one of the constraints that we have that we can only have four primary partitions, one of which can be extended. So I'll create a primary, make it partition two, and then first sector, just the next available. And then again, I'll make it one gig. And if I press P to print my partition table, there you go, I've got my second partition. Let me just go ahead and create one more while I'm here. Uh, again, I'll make it a primary. I'm running out, I only got two free now. Uh, this would be partition three. And we're just gonna go ahead and again, make it one gig. So I've got three primary partitions, right? So I've only got one partition left. So notice how things change. Now when I press N, the default is no longer primary. Uh, the default is now an extended partition because basically the system saying, hey, you need to you need to claim all of your available space because this is the last actual partition that you can create. So if I do that, so I'll go ahead and for the last sector, I'll just take all of my available space. And I'll print P here. And so now we have dev VDA4, which is extended. Okay, so I can't directly use that extended partition. I would have to create, you know, a logical partition inside of that. You know, I press N here. And then adding logical partition five, notice it doesn't say primary extended or anything anymore because I'm out of partitions because this is MBR. And again, I could make that one gig or whatever size I wanted. And now I have my uh, partition tape, okay? Now, in order to commit these changes, okay, um, I'll go ahead and say W to write. Uh, it's always a good habit um, to, um, to run part probe after working with one of these partitioning tools. The, the file, so if I cat proc partitions, it'll show me the partition table as the kernel sees it. And you'll see that all those new partitions I just created, VDA1, VDA2, VDA3, VDA4 are there. Uh, they're there because that was a, um, it was an empty <laughs> disk before I uh, started doing any operations. Um, so I don't have to, in this particular case, run the part probe utility, but what that does is resyncs the partition table, you know, the kernel, um, and it's just good habit when you get out of FDisk or GDisk uh, G to just run part probe and then, you know, and then view the uh, partition table by catting out uh, proc, you know, partitions to make sure that it does, in fact, see all of the partitions that you just created. All right, so that's how we do things with, um, with FDisk. Now, if we're, we're dealing with the GPT disk, then we can use GDisk. Now, if I say GDisk dev VDA, you'll notice that it gives me uh, a warning, okay? It says partition table scan. It found a MBR partition table, did not find anything for GPT. So it said, if, so the message is, hey, I found an invalid GPT and a valid MBR. Converting MBR to GPT format. This is potentially destructive. You know, get out of here. <laughs> Type Q if this is a uh, MBR disk. Okay. Now, so the first thing I'll do is I'll go ahead and say print, and um, let me go ahead and just start deleting partition. So I'll delete partition five, and I'll delete uh, partition four, and we'll delete uh, partition three. Ah. Uh, Oops, somehow I wasn't paying enough attention there. So we're gonna delete partition two, and then finally we'll delete partition one. And you'll see here now that if I print, I no longer have any partitions, okay? The process for creating partitions is really the same here. Um, you know, again, I can do a question mark for help to bring up my help menu, but if I press end, add a new partition, Okay, it's gonna what you'll notice that now instead of only saying four, it's gonna let me create up to 128 here. We'll go ahead and say partition one, and then I'll go ahead and create partition one. There's the hex code uh, again. 83 Linux is the default. If I was making swap or LVM, you know, I could press L here and I could change it, but I don't need to. I'm just gonna stay with the Linux partition. So now I have my partition. And again, I could continue this process. Um, notice that now I have uh, two through 128 
Um, and again, I could just continue to, you know, create my partitions and I wouldn't have to worry about an extended and logicals and things like that. So there's a lot less constraints, you know, associated with GPT. Uh, again, so I've got a couple partitions created here. I'll go ahead and click on W to write. Mm -hmm. it says, are you sure? I say, go ahead, okay, do it. Uh, and then again, if I do a cat on rock partitions, you'll see that my partition table is up to date. It did work, but it, again, it's always good to have it to run part probe and then cat proc partitions to make sure that the uh, the kernel table, the way the kernel sees the partition table is the way the partition table is. Um, so so that's it. Um, again, that that's pretty quick. We're going to look at, in the next section, actually placing uh, file systems okay, uh, on these partitions and then making sure that they persistently mount. And we'll probably look at... Um, XFS, EXT4, uh, probably look at swap also. And then in the final lesson, lesson four, we'll look at uh, LVM. So uh, we'll see you guys and uh, have a great day.